where there is light, shadows lurk and fear reigns. Yet by the blade of night, mankind was given hope. Golden Knight Garo is my ideal perfect tokusatsu tie-in game. This should be the gold standard for Japanese media property tie-ins. It's from an era where the only licensed games weren't made by just Bandai and were copy-paste arena fighters that they release yearly only to kill the online in 10 to 18 months. Imagine getting good Kamen Rider games again instead of the shovelware crap we get now, or imagine a third-person action game based on My Hero Academia instead of the garbage like My Hero 1's Justice that exists as an all super move and finishers YouTube video simulator. I'm definitely getting a little ahead of myself and hyping this game up without explaining anything about it. So Goro is a tokusatsu show that was aired in Japan between October 2005 and March 2006. I'll be upfront with saying that I only started watching the show this game is based on after beating it. I did watch Goro the animation back when it was airing and I think it's probably the first anime with a main character that was CGI that did not make me want to turn it off and think back to the good old days of unrealistic anime budgets thanks to the economic bubble. Ah, beautiful cell animation, how I miss you so. Take me back, please, I beg you. Uh, anyways, the campaign has you playing as the main character Koga initially, after you accrue enough points from beating levels and spending them unlocking screenshots from the TV show in the gallery, you'll have access to playing the campaign as Rei. It is simply based on the amount of screenshots you have unlocked. So don't make the same mistake that I did where I started buying the expensive ones first thinking that they would get me Rei. If it wasn't already obvious enough from the title of this video and the footage I've shown you up until now, the game is only in Japanese. It's sadly one of the many very cool Japanese games that never saw localization in the West at all, but the game is almost completely playable by itself, even with just a basic understanding of Japanese, or honestly zero understanding of Japanese. If you really want to go the extra mile, you could realistically hold your phone up to the screen with Google Translate open, and would be able to get by just on that alone. Navigating the menus isn't hard, but obviously you aren't going to be able to understand what your ring is saying to you. There is a guide on GameFAQs from like 2006 seven that I've referenced just to know the controls, and that was helpful enough. I'll be linking to it in the description below. I actually got more insight into the combat systems of this game from a description of someone's long play. I'll also be linking that in the description below so you could check it out for yourself. Similar to how Zone of the Enders set out to capture the feeling of old mecha anime, this game perfectly captures the fantasy of being a tokusatsu hero. The combat feels great with a ton of feedback from styling on enemies. It rarely feels stiff, which is a massive issue with a lot of games from this time. Your jump looks and feels like you are a tokusatsu actor flying through the air on wires. Your air dash is super responsive and allows you to follow up on launchers very easily. This would be a perfect system to implement in the Sword of Etheria, which is in desperate need of something to be able to follow up on stuff like this. Air combat does feel initially awkward, and your jump is going to feel floaty at first because, well... It is. When locked onto an enemy and holding down the jump button, this will suspend you in the air, which allows you to glide through it like a ballerina. But once you release it, you start to fall to the ground right away. Like I said, at first, it initially feels really weird, but once you get the hang of it, you'll realize how intuitive it actually is. It's one of the aspects that helps sell the fantasy of playing in a tokusatsu production. You'll find yourself and the bosses you're fighting against perfectly suspended floating in the air, like when characters monologue at each other in other shows, or in battle and anime in general. The only thing I feel like is missing is the ability to instantly get to the ground when needed, which is something that does come up a decent amount, especially when playing on hard. The game really could have used a trick down type move, but the way it is now is in no way a deal breaker. The other somewhat weird quirk about this game that you'll have to wrap your head around is the camera. You don't have control of the camera at all. It sits at a fixed point like you're fighting in a diorama that is being filmed. It gives the game almost a 2.5D beat-em-up vibe to it. It's 
zooms out when needed, but the biggest issue it has is that it limits the arena's size. So if you and the enemies are on opposite ends of the camera's view, it won't zoom out further, and it ends up cutting off part of the stage with invisible walls. In one fight, it has some very bad framing to it, as the camera tries to keep focus on the boss more than you, since the boss is 50 feet tall, so you end up getting obscured pretty easily. But the obvious draw of this game, and everything the combat system is based around, is the Garou armor. It just looks so fucking cool. There's just something about this armor that I absolutely adore. Even in the live action show, which does have its moments of cheapness and bad CGI, the armor just shines through all the time. Which is probably my biggest hang up with some tokusatsu shows when it's just spandex are really bad CGI. Like nothing takes me out of the moment more than when you get a shot of the characters backs and you can see the zipper of the spandex suit they're in. I know that's kind of nitpicky, but yeah just really bothers me. When you start the levels in your human form, you have your basic combos and movement available to you, but the biggest thing is the bar in the top right corner that builds as you style on your enemies. At any point in a combo, you can hit triangle to cash in this bar to add to the timer in the bottom left corner right next to your health bar. When the timer reaches 99, you'll have the ability to don the armor, and this is where your combat gets some more additions to it. The two biggest being the motto flame projectiles on triangle and the ability to counter bosses with this QTE by pressing square at the right time. Similar to how Doom Eternal leaves zombies in the arena so you can chainsaw them for ammo, this game has two wiry horrors accompanying the bosses so you can stack time on them so you can transform again. I'm not entirely sure if this form makes you deal more damage, but the feedback is definitely kicked up to 11. When the combat is firing on all cylinders, it's an absolute amazing spectacle to see you and bosses fly through the air as you wall splat each other against the invisible walls. There are still some issues I have with the combat, but I am very willing to say that this could entirely be the result of the language barrier. Sometimes moves just come out and I have no clue what the reason is, and when playing on hard, which is something we'll cover in a bit, it's going to result in you dying due to this misstep. I find myself doing this lunge attack when pressing square and I have no idea what the condition is to do it, so instead of doing my basic combo, it does this. It's a super long, overly animated attack that fucks with your combos when juggling bosses, leaving you completely vulnerable and can easily be countered which results in me getting one shot too many times to count. The campaign structure is similar to a fighting game's arcade slash ladder mode. You have 10 levels you play through where you fight a bunch of basic enemies and then a boss at the end of it. Once you kill the boss, you move on to the next level, rinse and repeat until you're done. Once you beat the campaign as Koga, you'll have the ability to unlock the second mode to play as Kiba, and this is where there are a decent amount of differences. You are still fighting the same bosses you've seen up until now, but the difference is both how Kiba plays and how you go about fighting them. Instead of a ladder of fights that you progress through that represent the episodes from the show, you can rematch these bosses as many times in a row as you want, with the ultimate goal of absorbing some of their moves. The biggest difference with Kiba besides starting in the armor and not being on a timer is that his move list is completely customizable and you can replace his moves with those you absorb from bosses you fight. What's even cooler about this is when you do the main campaign and Kiba is the final boss, they will have the move list that you saved in the other mode. So you can make a mega overpowered unstoppable god killing death machine and then you have to fight against it. Besides having the three playable knights, there is still some other side content that if you have watched my Jojo Phantom Blood review, know that I mentioned it in that video. This game actually has a versus mode where you can play against friends or AI as both the knights and the bosses of this game. The bosses, similar to Rey, are also unlocked by buying stuff with points in the gallery. From what little I've played of it, it seems really unbalanced but in the best kind of way. It's such a cool mode that I wish more games would actually put this in. Remember back when games would have cool side modes like this that were just there for fun, instead of maybe coming out patched in later or charged money for this, or just has a shitty tacked on multiplayer mode that'll be dead within a week, or are a pre-order bonus? For as much as I think games are still amazing now, I do think that there are a lot of aspects we have lost since the sixth generation. Outside of this, the last thing I really want to talk about is the game on hard. Now, I don't normally do multiplayer multiple playthroughs for videos unless I feel it is super necessary, but this game was short enough and I wanted to get points faster so I could unlock Rey and all the other characters that I went ahead and played through the main campaign on hard, and initially it was really cool. For perspective, on normal I was playing pretty oonga boonga and just slamming my enemies over and over again, only with Kiba and the other boss that is invulnerable on one side of it giving me any issues. On hard it actually changes how you approach combat encounters and alters the pace of the game. 
the pace becomes much slower as you need to be careful and play methodical because you can die very easily. It's never slowed down enough to where it feels unfun. It creates this tense standoff back and forth rhythm with bosses as if you are equals on the same footing capturing that back and forth that tokusatsu shows have when fighting the villain of the week. You know, before the hero usually gets a new power up or just one shots them at the end of the episode to save the day. This then completely goes out the window with the last two, arguably three levels where the bosses just turn off your armor in a single hit and constantly touch of death you. Yeah, this feels incredibly unfair. And when the game already has a pre-existing issue of bosses and even enemies for that matter, taking up to a minute to show up because they are clearly loading in on the back end, that precious time you have with the armor is being unfairly depleted since you have nothing to do. Hard mode made me realize just how important your armor form is and how without it, you are fighting a very uphill battle. On hard, you start with zero motto flames compared to normal where you start with three. You can only get them by successfully countering bosses with the QTE, whose window is so comically small and is super hard to tell when it's going to show up for most attacks, as it seems to be inconsistent when the same attack would have the QTE or not. This again could be due to the language barrier causing me not to be able to find out what is the criteria for this QTE to show up, but having it locked to the armor sucks regardless. Since your health bar doesn't take any damage when you have the armor on, you are in dire need of it, so you don't repeatedly die as soon as some of the bosses tag you with with a single attack. Some of these fights start you versus the boss with either very little time or no armor, period. How much time you had going into these levels was very inconsistent in my playthroughs. I have no idea if it's simply based on how much you had in the previous level at the very end, or if levels have a default to give you if you don't have any. But either way, in these fights where you have very little time or no armor at all, you have to scramble and try to ignore the boss and fill your gauge off of the two minions, or risk versing the boss trying to get time that way and not die to a single fuck up because they are very unforgiving. So hard being an unbalanced nightmare is one thing, that is ultimately fine since you don't need to play it on hard to get anything to my knowledge, and it is there for people who are masochistic. The biggest issue I have with this game, and the thing that I ultimately see as its biggest flaw, is its lack of content. I beat the main campaign in an hour, and that's all the content this game really has to offer. You're going to be fighting these guys over and over and over again with just different characters, and while they do play different from Koga, it still stings to see a game that is this fun to play and this stylish have such little content and we will never see another game like this ever again. Please, Bandai, for the love of God, remember when you made good tie-in games that were not the same shitty arena fighter you churn out every year. I beg you, please remember your roots. If you've made it this far into the video, I just want to say thanks for watching as always. If you really liked the video, please leave a like, comment, and pass it around. If you know of any other obscure action games similar to this one, please leave a comment below letting me know. I will be sure to check it out. If you really like my videos and my channel, and you want to support me, maybe consider becoming a patron on Patreon. All patrons get access to videos a day early, along with a $7 tier that allows you to view incomplete rough cuts of upcoming videos, like my upcoming multi-review on the Onimusha series. I'm now going to shout out all of my $5 and up patrons who really help support the channel. A. Akita Fishkiyama, Bully, Francis, Jeff Lad, Kohai Carmen, Cosmonaut Cola, Medi Not the Bad Guy, Nathan Redding, Nemphi, Quartz, Revan, Ringo, Rovit, Ruben Rodriguez, 
Rodriguez, Samuel Egan, Sayan Heggie, Sir Newt Newt, Walkman, Ben Johnson, Brian Marcello, Bergnut, Chichometrius, David Roberts, Dusty the Zombie, Ekfrazo, Elliot Morton, Filthy Finger 69, Fish Kami, Justin Collini, Cax Mark Chick, Kevin Velasquez, Lotto, Lucy the Fox, Megan, Nicholas Pedinato, Onion Girl, PPR Masked, Slump Tingle, Solid Link, Starcasters, Some Panda, The FOE 3, and William Moore. Thank you so much, guys. As for what's coming out next, it'll most likely be Sword of Etheria, and then I think I'm going to try and do a video on Destroy Humans 2, since the remake is five weeks away from release at the time of recording this. After that, I'm not entirely sure. I've been having a very bad issue lately of just looking at all the videos I want to do and just telling myself, man, that would be really cool to do, but it's most likely going to underperform, and I really can't afford for videos to flop right now, especially after all of them except for the Yakuza 2 retrospective, which even then has stalled out in views, has flopped. So that's why I want to say thank you again to everyone who supports me on Patreon, and anyone and everyone who shows up to the Twitch streams which I've been doing lately, like editing this video live, any amount of time people just stop by to talk in the chat or even donate to the stream just means the world to me. If you're a card game player of any kind, I have a TCG player affiliate link in the description below. Any purchases you make will give me a small kickback. I also have a NordVPN affiliate link if you want to get a discount on a two-year plan. That's pretty much it for this video. As always, thank you for watching, and see you next time.